All right, guys, we just made it to Salem, Indiana. We're at the National Guard Armory out here. Looks like it's pretty packed. I'll give you a, just a parking lot view. But we're gonna go in and see what we can find inside. Hopefully it looks to be a pretty good show. They say there's 80 tables in here, completely sold out. See if we could find a few deals. And then I gotta get home, <laughs> no joke. Gotta get a plumber to come out now today and get yard work done from all this rain before we start getting it next week. So stay tuned for some video clips. What's going on, everybody? So, Salem Card Show in Indiana. I'm going to talk different aspects of it. Um, then I'll show you the five cards I picked up. I was surprised I actually got to pick up five cards. And I'll talk about that a little bit, too. So, the guy who runs it, Brad, phenomenal job. Had it sold out, 80 tables. Um, it was in a National Guard armory, so bigger venue than when he had it in the uh, fairgrounds. Plus, there's AC and heat in there. Liked it. Uh, room walking around and stuff. I didn't really take a whole lot of footage due to the fact that it was a lot of the same retail stuff at every table. And nothing was like really exciting me, okay? So, if I'm going to show you guys video clips of cool stuff, I want to make sure it's worth it. Not like, hey, look at all these freaking, you know, downtowns that everybody's seen a million of, you know? Um, walked around, tried to work a couple deals out in the beginning, and it's just that people want, you know, 100% of whatever they see on eBay, just the way the venue was. And, you know, I was at the point where I was really tired, I just like, yeah, I'm good, or they were over, and they'd come down to, you know, maybe five, ten dollars under a $300 card, just didn't make sense for me at all, so... Moved on with a lot of stuff. Uh, one guy, you know, we were trying to work a deal out uh, with some uh, vint or vintage Hall of Fame uh, basketball. We were close. We just couldn't get there. And I was looking at the time. I had to pick up Com C. Came in. <laughs> Boy, that was quick. Overnight it to me. But, uh, you know, overall, there was a crowd there. I did hear a lot of dealers saying they weren't selling there. They didn't sell anything or they sold very little. Which is concerning, so that means either your inventory was not good, or you're overpriced. Because the people, I know, I know a few people are walking around, they bring money to these shows to buy. So one of the two things, either your inventory was just not there, or you were too high priced. They just didn't want to do the hassle, and I understand because that's what I saw walking around. Uh, there was vintage there and stuff like that. Um, the clip that you guys seen in the beginning, that's where the basketball stuff was that I was trying to work a deal out with. And I mean, I'm not, there was a guy up here beforehand, and it, it was just funny. Comps to Carver 130, he was trying to get it at 75% from a dealer. I'm like, really? You're insulting somebody at 75%, at least buy the freaking table if you're going to offer 70, 75%, you know. Ah, I don't know what's going on anymore with this stuff, guys. Um, I did talk to a couple dealers in there, you know, getting inventory is a hard thing right now because there's a lot of people going around these shows buying up stuff for whatnot or whatever it may be, mostly for whatnot, some for repack, but that's more of your bigger shows. And it's just, they say that it's hard to get inventory. I understand they can buy retail, but people really don't want retail unless you're going to hit that case hit type deal out of it. And normally... You mean, I mean, how many times are you going to pull uh, one of the top three or four downtowns or kabooms? So, 
I think we're going to touch on that in a video about the uh, inventory where dealers are having issues with it. I did see guys walking around selling stuff. I just wanted to scoot in and out. You guys want to see the cards, right? I'll start showing you cards. So, I don't know if I have these in any particular order, to be honest. This was uh, off of one of the deals. Paul Coffey, Artifacts Auto out of five. I, I don't know. I found one that was similar to this doing $80, and the guy was like 20 bucks, and I'm like, all right. So I couldn't argue, and this is actually something I think about grading as well, too, because in that deal, there was also this Harris, and this Rivera. I know, I know, it's Panini, it's out of seven, still cool card. But got a heck of a deal on to it. Um, it was nice because he looked up everything onto it. We talked back and forth, communicated well. Uh, a lot of people still don't know about Terapeak. You have to have the eBay store, of course. But those are confirmed, like those were paid for, you know. And it, it kind of helps out with, you know, trying to alleviate was it shill bitted and stuff like that. Now, granted, I could, you know, say me and Johnny over there, we both could shill bid the crap out of each other's stuff and pay for it going back and forth. But we're losing money by doing it, too. I'm sure somebody out there is probably already thinking about doing or done it. All right. Uh, next. The next two cards were off another deal. What do you know? Another Mariano Rivera. Sticker auto from Topps Chrome. Pretty cool. A little OC, but still Mariano Rivera. And probably the highlight. Very good condition on this Jeter. I think it was 97. No, I'm sorry. 2007. I don't know why I was saying 97. The only issue I saw is, you guys see where the sticker is there? It's kind of like top left corner is a little bit pilly type deal. So I'm thinking about just getting it slabbed as an authentic card and grading the auto. Just so it's there. But otherwise, this card's really clean. I mean, front and back. I mean, look, no whiting, no creasing. I mean, I was amazed by it. Other than that, I mean, I don't know. You guys are great at PSA if your sticker's coming up a little bit. Have they ever gigged you on that? I mean, serious question. Otherwise, I mean, this card is really sharp. A little bit of whiting down there I see down the camera. Not much. But really sharp for being that old. And I changed out the case it was in. But really happy with that deal there as well. Um, not a whole lot picked up. I know. I think it was all baseball and hockey, wasn't it? Oh, boy. I should have gave Wildcat a warning. I don't know if I did or not now <laughs> but it was a good show overall there was definitely a lot of variety there i mean there was probably about five tables or so that had pokemons or five dealers so i passed those over i would say at least half were all retail a couple people had some nice value boxes but there were people digging in them and i just you know me i if i'm gonna sit there and be digging I at least put chairs out there for so guys can sit down because it's a long day when you start digging through, you know, freaking five, six, seven, eight, or like me, 12 to 15, you know, 3,200 count value boxes. Um, but yeah, the one thing was there were some people that were really overpriced on their stuff and I just didn't even want to deal with it, to be honest. It's just one of those things. You see people that are overpriced on to it. I mean, it's one thing you come up and be like, hey, you know what? I didn't change a lot of my stickers, so just hit me up. I got it type deal. But I'm also one of the firm believers that, you know, if you're going to be a dealer, you need to update your stuff. It's one thing, like, if I run out of inventory and I'm starting to throw other cards I brought with me and I didn't price, I kind of got it. Or I'm, I just say, hey, I'm taking offers because there's no, nothing I could find similar to it. I got stuff like that, but, man... It was just a little crazy out there, but really good show overall. Like I said, he filled all his tables. He could not control the, the... Anytime I say this, it's just so people understand the promoter can only fill the tables. He cannot say, hey, you need to set your pricing at this or bring these cards. He did. He set the venue out. He promoted it well. He even had a burger truck come up there, which was really cool. I was thinking about getting but there was like four or five people in line, and I just I needed to get moving, so I was going to try the burger up there. But really, really pretty good, decent show up there. Um, 
like I said, I wanted to get more videos highlighting some cards, but they're just, you guys would have been bored with it, you know, <laughs> I'll be honest. You would have been really, really bored seeing a lot of the retail stuff at tables or stuff that's, you know, selling, you know, 30, 40 times a day on eBay. But like I said, overall, I found some stuff, so I'm happy out there. Other than that, guys, I am off next weekend. No shows, either buying or selling. Uh, I will be set up in Lexington the following Saturday, that last Saturday of the month. Many new value boxes. I think over half are all new. Uh, inventory, and they're probably over. Uh, then it'll be May 11th back in Louisville set up. End of May will be back in Lexington. You guys get the thing. Then beginning of June, I'll probably do the Louisville show, turn around and do the Midwest monster type deal. But that's it, guys. Hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed the video. I enjoyed the show um, going out there. That's just my own fault for being tired up till 3 in the morning, getting up at 7, and then driving out. I think it was an hour and 15 minutes one way. But, yeah, I was happy. I mean, that cheater's pretty cool. I'm still pretty stoked on that one. But other than that, I am out. You guys take care. Have a good one. Catch y'all next video.